I've seen it used and I loved it. <laughs> How many of you know very little about it? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, good. We got a good mix. Yeah. So this is not going to be totally over your head for those of you that haven't used it. Um, it's really going to be, I think, a big eye-opener for you to be like, oh my gosh, I can use this literally every day. Yeah. Um, so I'm Jill with Chicago Title. Um, we are one of the power partners here. Um, there are a team of us. We all kind of work the valley together. Um, Lindsay is our Director of Digital and Social Strategies at Chicago Title. So she teaches classes on literally everything you can imagine. <laughs> Um, related to really kind of anything digital, social media, um, video, all of that stuff. So um, we know there's a big need for that, um, and we just try to try to bring that to you guys. So I'm going to turn it over to her. She's going to talk uh, about a ton of information. Um, you know, obviously this isn't a huge group, so ask questions. Um, you know, if you have a question, there's the, the possibility somebody else probably has the same question. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning. As Jill mentioned, I am the Director of Marketing at Chicago Title. So yes, I do all the digital social strategy. And so just so you guys know, I'm here at this uh, particular Scottsdale office. I'm here every last, the fourth Wednesday of the month. Fourth Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m. So each month we bring a different digital marketing topic. And today, ChatGPT is the hot ticket item. So that's what we're going over today. You will see today we're going to talk about what it is, how to get started, how to write a prompt, which is very important and how to utilize it in real estate using your brand voice and then lastly some google chrome extensions mm -hmm. to help make the uh, chat gpt process even cooler than it already is <laughs> all right so to start if you aren't familiar with what chat gpt is it is a artificial intelligence tool that allows um, a user to generate original text so basically you're going to ask it a question and it's going to give you a response back um, I like to think of it as kind of just this beautiful, brilliant mind. Like this machine model, whatever you want to call it, it has so much information stored up here, and you could ask it anything, and it responds back to you. Um, ChatGPT was created by a company called OpenAI. So OpenAI um, was actually, it was funded by, funded, not founded. Someone was like, founded? No. Funded by Elon Musk. He is an investor within um, OpenAI, big, big uh, company dedicated to research and development of artificial intelligence. Um, and this was actually launched in just November of last year, so pretty new. Um, in fact, 100 million users within two months. This has, it has outperformed Instagram, Facebook, any big uh, digital marketing platform that you can think of right now. It has outshined it tremendously of, in terms of growth, how quickly it has grown. So yeah, um, within two months, 100 million users, <laughs> insanity. All right, so how does this work? So this mind, let's say, um, it is powered by a sophisticated algorithm which has fed a massive amount of contextual data, and then it allows it to respond to you in a human-like fashion. Now the problem with this is it's not 100% always correct because this mind, let's, I keep calling it mind, but this machine, this tool, it only has, has been fed data up through 2021. So if it is 2022, then um, it, like the data from 2022, it will not be able to respond with anything current, any trends that are happening. So think about if you were to ask it, uh, write me a, a three, sentence Instagram caption about mortgage rates, right? What it's going to give you is going to, it's not accurate, right? What we saw in 2021 is not what we see today. Um, and then who is it for? Honestly, everybody. It is for any industry, any, whether you're a student, I mean, that's a big hot topic right now that colleges are like, how are we going to embrace that this is here? Because they know at this point, like students are using this, how do we, how do, we use, how do we make sure that they're still um, performing at their highest standards, but they're also going to be using this? Um, so it is for anybody. <clears throat> A little bit about artificial intelligence is we are, you guys are probably already using it and you're not even necessarily aware of using it, but 80% of industry experts have already integrated some form of artificial intelligence into their, into their online marketing. Um, example of AI that is around us all the time is Siri, right? So if you ever were asking Siri a question on your phone, right? That's artificial intelligence. Um, it is it is 
here to stay. And as I go through some of this stuff today, it is a little scary. I will say when I first was diving into this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is creepy that it knows all this and it is this quick and everything. But artificial intelligence is here. Big debates right now about whether it's going to replace jobs or not. And I still believe that no, and especially in our, in our industry, the reason people work with a real estate agent is that, that human connection, right? Like, because at this point, um, you've seen the trends of who's gone to work with iBuyer companies versus who's actually stayed working with a traditional real estate agent. And the numbers prove that people want that human connection and that relationship. So I don't think that this is necessarily going to be impacting our industry as much as maybe some others right now. Um, so ChatGPT comes out with new models. So think of this as like the iPhone, right? So there's the iPhone 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? There's all these different models. Think of it kind of like this with ChatGPT. Right now they're on model four. So it's called ChatGPT 4. So if you hear what you hear that out and about, you're like, okay, that's just the current model that they're, they're on. Um, <coughs> how much does it cost? Now it is a free tool to use. Uh, ChatGPT is free. However, model four, the, the most recent model, that is $20 a month. What I'm gonna show you today, I do have the paid version. I just switched to the paid version because I've been doing so many presentations that um, the, with the free version, the, the downside to the free version is at any time, if it's over capacity and so many people are trying to use it, it can say, timed out right now, we don't, we're not able to help you basically. So with the free version, you do get you run into that. The longest I've had to wait as a free user to use it again was an hour. So I was like, okay, I can be patient, I guess, for an hour. Um, but so the free version, I think most people can get by with. But if you do want a little extra speed, you want to be able to use the latest and greatest model, aka the best mind, right? Um, Twenty dollars a month, and I'll show you what that looks like. So ChatGPT 4, the most recent model, came out in March 14th, so it's about a little over a month old. Um, and I'm going to talk about the differences between the different models. Now, if you were to go into ChatGPT, which I'm, we're going to play around with that here in a bit, you're going to see you have the option to choose between three different versions if you're a paid user. The one on the far left, ChatGPT 3.5 Legacy. That's free. That on the left hand side should technically say free, but that is what it's called, 3.5 Legacy. Um, it is not the strongest in terms of uh, how smart it is, and it's also not the fastest. So that's, that's why it's the free model. Um, I'll show you the difference how each one performs too. 3.5 Turbo, that is a paid model. That one is the $20 a month <clears throat> plus user. It is the fastest. It is the fastest, and it is kind of alarming how quick it is. But it isn't the smartest. The conciseness level says two out of five. G Chat GPT four, the most recent one, it is actually the slowest. It is the slowest of all the models, but it is the smartest. Now, what would you want to use Chat GPT four for? <laughs> um, would be like they're doing a lot of code, so it's kind of crazy. If you wanted to develop your own app. You could just say, develop an app that will do X, Y, Z, and then it will spit all the coding out, very technical. And uh, so people who are doing coding, people who are doing a lot of like math and science, uh, they are loving ChatGPT4 because it is just brilliant. It is very smart. Now, getting started with this is super easy. Um, it's chat.openai.com. It is not an app at this point. At this moment, it is not an app, so you can't go to like the app store and download. If you do and you find something, it is it is not the true ChatGPT. Um, it is someone trying to uh, make something else to look like it. But it is a website, chat.openai.com. You hit sign up and you create your account, and I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, if you did want to use it on your phone, there is a way, and I have a video that you guys can look at um, on our Chicago Title Instagram page, but there is a video that I've shown that basically tells us how to kind of create a shortcut to ChatGPT, like the website browser, but you click on it from your phone and it's almost like it's acting just like an app, um, but it is, it is still the web browser version. 
And um, you're sharing that? Yeah. yeah, so I will I will show, I can uh, probably demo that here actually at the end. And if it's, you, if you sign it, we'll send you a link to Yeah. It. Thanks, Jill. Yeah. Uh, it's very quick. It was 30 seconds. Uh, it, you'll see how quick and easy that was. Uh, but yeah, get started here. Now, I want to talk a little bit, actually, before we start, I want to talk about prompts. So prompts, this is very important. If you are going to use ChatGPT, this is what I kind of want you guys to understand, is when you ask it a question, right, it has, it has all the knowledge in the world you would basically want for 2021. Um, to get the best response, you need to know how to build the prompt. You need to know how to ask it the right question for you to yield the best response. So here's how to effectively build your prompt. Um, first, lend your shoes. So what I mean by that is you're going to tell this model what it needs to be. So you're going to start by saying, act as a real estate agent. Act as a copywriter. Act as a nutritionist whatever you want it to be you're gonna tell it that to start so that way it can kind of put on that thinking cap of okay I'm a real estate agent that's the first part second be very specific with what you want um, adding in enough context keeping it clear concise and straightforward but yeah giving it enough and I'll show you some examples of where I've had a poor prompt versus a better prompt um, next is define the results so once you've said, act as a real estate agent, do these things, X, Y, Z, but what do you want the result to look like? It can give you like a, a full on article. It can give you a lot of information, but if you're like, I just want five bullet points. I just want one sentence. I want three tips, whatever that is. Um, make sure you define that so that way you're getting exactly what you're looking for. And then lastly, refine the results. So um, if you don't like what you've gotten out of your response, you can totally um, manipulate it to give you, say, oh, you know what, you gave me those five bullet points, make it seven, right? And then they'll give you two extra. And so you can refine it at that point. But those first three is what I want you guys to remember. Lend your shoes, be specific, and then define the results. All right, so here's a couple examples. Um, so my first one, I did say, act as a real estate agent, write about buying a home. Well, what might give me a little bit better content is act as a real estate agent and write five tips for first time home buyers who are looking to purchase a home in the next year in Phoenix, Arizona. So much more specific on that second time around where I'm saying, okay, this audience who's gonna be receiving these five tips, uh, first time home buyers, um, it's going to be in the next year and it's gonna be in Phoenix. So that way the mind is like, okay, I can kind of think about the Phoenix market specifically. Um, and then I did define, I want five tips here. The next one, write a script for my podcast relating to real estate. All right, well, next time we're gonna say, act as a real estate agent, write a 10 minute script for my podcast because podcasts can be all sorts of lengths, right? Um, focusing on the importance of working with a licensed realtor when selling your home, right? So that is, kind of the, the more specifics with the 10 minutes and what do we want them to focus in on. So those are a couple examples of how you're gonna improve the prompt. Now I'm going to escape out of here and we're gonna go directly into the platform and play around with this, this tool. So as I mentioned, chat.openai.com. Uh, when you get here, if you hit sign up, this is your first time, Hmm. Um, well, so it's telling me right now that the, the system is down as a free user, but I'm going to log in as a paid user, and we will be able to get in here. But that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, you saw that little error message. If it is on overload, that will happen. All right. So now we're in. Okay. ChatGPT Plus, you can see I'm a paid user because it says plus right here in the center. At the top is um, the model. So we talked about 3.5 legacy, that's your, um, or I'm sorry, legacy is right here, this is your free. This is gonna be your turbo, this is that fast one I was talking about. And then here's ChatGPT4, this is the, the really, really smart one. So we can kind of- um, Smart but slow. <laughs> smart but slow, yeah, right? Take, pick your poison. So uh, you can choose which, which model you want to ask or you want to use while you're asking your questions. One thing that is new as of yesterday 
is ChatGPT just came out with um, incognito mode. So there was a whole issue in Europe, um, a privacy issue, about all of the things that we're asking. It stays here on the left-hand side unless I choose to delete them. Um, but it's, it's kind of tracking and it's getting to know all the questions I'm asking. And it's, it's not a bad thing necessarily because it is everything I ask it. Um, we'll pull up one example right here. Um, okay, let's pull this up. Actually, I'm gonna do this one right here. All right, so act as a real estate agent and create a letter to a current homeowner with positive equity in the home, giving them four reasons why it's a good time to sell their home. So this is what it gave me. But see right here on the right, I can either say thumbs down or thumbs up. By me saying thumbs up, that means, okay, this is kind of what I'm looking for. If I say thumbs down, that's like, mm, this isn't really what I wanted. So when you do thumbs up, thumbs down, it's kind of training this to get to know what the user wants. Now with that incognito mode, it's claiming that we're not, we're not remembering any of the thumbs up, thumbs down, what you're searching, we're, we're not remembering it. In actuality, it is actually saving it for 30 days just to make sure that there's no like abuse going, like there's, things are uh, pretty straightforward and not, I don't, I don't know. But they're saying that they're keeping it for 30 days um, internally. But that's incognito mode. If you are on the non-incognito mode, it's gonna keep all of your data forever and ever, so that way it can kind of get to know you and what you like. A question I've gotten a lot in, from agents is, okay, if I'm gonna ask this, let's say they're asking this question, but you're also asking this question, are we gonna have a lot of overlap where we're all gonna sound like robots and everyone's giving the same response back, right? And so the answer is no. We've actually tested this a couple times with some of our, uh, our clients. And it, like I said, it kind of gets to know you uh, by thumbs up, thumbs down, and the way that you're having the conversations with this robot, so to say. Um, it is getting to know you, so it will be unique to you. I don't know. It might kind of rephrase it a little bit different, but ultimately what it is saying is more or less the same. Uh, you can run into that, but I don't think that every single person in MLS's property description is going to look identical, right? It's not going to be the exact same. Uh, okay, so yes? Are all the responses text, or can you ask it to include uh, photos and stuff like that in, in the responses? Good question. So text for free users. Um, for paid users, they have just started, it is new, they have started integrating image um, where you could say, draw me a picture of a horse riding, or a horse, a monkey riding a horse with a banana and a tan, like whatever it is, and it will do that for you. That is new with the um, paid version. But again, the free version, So it will not. draw something. It will, it will provide an image, okay. yes. Um, okay, now let's go back to home. This is new chat, top left. This is kind of where you're gonna begin. Uh, whenever you wanna start something new, you're gonna go right up here into new chat. And I'm just gonna leave this as is right now on this particular model. Really quick, before we move forward, I did say you can turn this in incognito mode. I wanna show you how to do that. Bottom left, you're gonna go into your settings, click on your name, your account, go to your settings, you're going to hit data control and then you're going to turn this off. So you can turn off the history and the training so that way it's not kind of um, capturing all the things that you've been asking it. So yeah, I could turn it off right here. Now I'm in incognito mode. Um, that's, that's what I was just mentioning in the settings. I'm going to leave mine on. I want it to get to know me a little bit better. All right. So in here, this is my prompt. This is my space. So let's start with at as a real estate agent, provide me with three reasons why it is a good time to buy a home in Phoenix, Arizona. Can you dictate to it the style of which you would like to write? Yes. For instance, could you say write a humorous yes, version? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know what's even more, even further than that, I could say, I'll show you, um, I could say to act as a specific person. 
So if I wanted to say, act like Tom Ferry, right? I can say, I can give it a voice. I, I'll show you a couple, I have a couple examples in here. But did you see how quickly that just generated that response? Um, so it does, it does start by saying, act uh, as the AI language model, it doesn't have access to current up-to-date up to date trends or data. And we talked about that, it has up through 2021. However, these are potential reasons why it may be great. Strong housing market, favorable mortgage rates, um, a growing job market. Okay, so I would say, give me two more reasons, um, but include responses for families with young children. All right, access to quality education, family friendly amenities. So now I made it a little bit more specific. I want to cater this to families with young kids. And it gave me that information right there. Again, you see how quick it is to tell you exactly what, what you want. Now, what do I do with this, right? So maybe I make an Instagram video out of this. Maybe I'm doing some video content and um, I can talk about each bullet point every day. So one day I talk about the access to quality education. One day I talk about family friendly amenities. Maybe I'm putting this in my listing presentation, right? There's lots of um, buyer, if you were doing like a buyer webinar or something, uh, there's lots of ways that you can utilize all this information. Now I wanna point out something at the very, very bottom. If you are following along on your computer right now, you're not, probably you're not gonna see this. So this is a Google Chrome extension. If you use the browser, Google Chrome, you will be able to enable this extension. I have it pulled up right here. It's called Web Chat GPT. And what it does is it's also going to pull in information from the internet. So you will have access to things through 2022 and 2023 um, because not only is it using the, the mind that it has, it's also <laughs> pulling in things from the internet. Is this only the paid version? Nope, so this Google Chrome extension is free. So basically the caveat is you have to be using Google Chrome as your internet, uh, as your internet browser. So uh, I would just go to the Chrome web store and then you're gonna type in, it's called Web Chat GPT. And then you would hit install, and this one says remove right here because I already have it installed, but you would hit install. And then once it's installed, anytime that you're on Chat GPT, bless you, anytime you're on Chat GPT, and you're on Google Chrome, you will see this at the bottom and I can enable that and I can turn that on and now it's going to also pull in information from the internet and not just that mind that it has, right? Uh, let me show you what the differences look like. So I showed you this one earlier. This was with the web access toggled off. Now I then I decided to put it on, oh, really quickly right here. It said one of the answers of why you want to um, sell your home was low mortgage rates because they're at a historic low, right? That obviously is not accurate. So then I did it a second time and I turned on the web access to have a little bit more recent information. And now it says favorable interest rates. Instead of historic low, it's relatively low, right? So you can see the difference um, between turning on that web access and not turning on the web access. And then it does, when you do have web access turned on, it gives you the sources of what um, internet website that it's pulling from. So these were the three websites, yes. Question for you. Yes. So when you turn on web access, mm -hmm. does Chat or the GPT mm -hmm. provide opinion? And how is that affected by being Love that. on the web? Good question. So it does not, it does not give opinion, well, Sort of. Let me show you an example. So we actually did this. Um, here's an example. And the question was, act as an American citizen and tell me who the worst president of the United States was, right? Very opinionated, right? Can't get more opinionated than that. And so then it responds with, as an AI language model, it is not within my programming to express personal opinions biases on political matters. And that's with the... So that's right. with it on, but then scroll down, scroll down, then it starts to pull in some things that the internet did have. 
So it does. So it starts. This is the mind right here. This is the mind saying, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't say yay or nay on anybody. But then as I scroll down, web access does have a little bit of opinion. Uh, the sources are going to be right here one, <coughs> two, and three. And those are right here. So this is, those are the three articles online that it pulled from that it gave its opinion on who, not. The mind didn't give its opinion, but the, the internet gave its opinion on who the worst husband. Um, I was nervous what that was going to give us. Do you find that when you have a web access on, that the data is a little bit more accurate, would you say? or is it just I, like I don't think so. I think it's kind of the same, where you still have to kind of do your own check to see if it really is or not. Because, yeah. I mean, I can put something out on the internet and it's yeah. probably not credible, right? So, um, no, I think you still have to kind of cross-reference everything. Whether web access is on or off, always cross-reference. Yes? I may have missed it, but I see current date 4-6-2023. Yep, that's when I searched it. Okay. That's when I did the search for this particular one. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, so my question then is, if you're using the web chat um, installed with Google or yep. web access, is that giving you more current information? Yes. It is. Yeah. Okay. It will give you up until like present day. What is up? Whatever Good. is on Google or Got Bing it. or yeah. All right. Yeah. Perfect. So once you get the results, are you able to go Have back and say, uh, "All right, you asked for five point bullet points, yeah. but you only like three of them." Are you able to say, "Remove points two and three, uh -huh. and then it'll just spit out a new one? Absolutely. Yep. You can mm -hmm. do that. Um, let's look at some of these past examples that I've done. Uh, this one right here, we'll go to the very top. So this one was bad prompt. Bad prompt, I said, create a nutrition plan for me to lose weight. What it gives me, very, very basics. Lower your calorie caloric intake, eat more protein, drink more water, right? We all know that those are healthy steps to take to lose weight. Now, I, I'm like, okay, we're gonna be more specific about this. Act as a nutritionist, nutritionist, create a seven-day nutrition plan, including breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. I want to lose 2% body fat, which would be a phenomenon if I lost 2% body fat in seven days. But um, And then I said avoid avocados, and I even spelled allergic wrong, so it, it knew what I was talking about. Avoid avocados as I am allergic. Um, and so here's what it gave me. So here's a seven-day plan to help you lose 2% body fat. It gives me day one day two, three, and so forth. None of it includes avocados. And then we scroll down. I say, okay, now create a shopping list. All right, I wanna do all these things. And it gives me the shopping list and it separates it within the grocery store. Produce, you need this. Protein, grains, dairy, pantry. And I like this at the bottom. It says, remember to check your pantry for any ingredients you may have before going shopping. It's like, thanks, you're trying to save me a few, a few bucks, right? Um, what about recipes? <laughs> yes, okay, good call. So here, here's the next one. Now I said, okay, we've got these random weird things in my fridge. How are we gonna make this into a recipe? Utilize onion, garlic, rice, cheese, chicken, <laughs> olive oil, corn, and yogurt. So it said, how about a cheesy wow. chicken and rice with corn and yogurt sauce? Wow. And it gave me the ingredients, the instructions, and then my next question with it was, what temperature does chicken need to be cooked to, right? And so this is an example of, okay, it's giving me 165, I know that's accurate, but this is a thing where you would wanna check your sources to make sure whatever it's giving you, is it really 165, is it this, is it that? Check um, the sources that you know, whether that be, I mean, the internet isn't always credible, <laughs> right? But it could, be a, it could be a cookbook at home or something um, to make sure that whatever it's giving you is accurate. So yeah, what I like to tell people is this is a time saver, not necessarily just for business. I mean, absolutely for business. But you see how that just meal planned seven, seven days of meals for me. And I'm saving, let's say, an hour's worth of time that can be put back into my business. So all of those videos that I've said, oh, I don't have time to do this, I have to do cook dinner, and I have to do this and that, right? Well, now I can put that time back into my business because I just saved an hour using this chat GPT. Pretty soon, <laughs> it will interact with fries order it and it already delivered. does, does it? Oh, oh my God. i'm going to show you that that yeah we'll just jump into that actually right now that is okay 
So I said you could be a paid user, twenty dollars a month. If there's a hundred million, I mean, at this point, there's more than a hundred million users, but they could make a pretty penny with that. But here's how they're going to be making money: Chat GPT plugins. Now, you can only use these plugins as a paid user, just so you know. Um, but it integrates now with Instacart, OpenTable, Expedia. So with that example I just showed you, here's the grocery list I need. Then it can just auto-populate that right into Instacart and I don't have to go through Instacart and pick all my items. It will just auto-populate it right into Instacart. I put my credit card in and then it's done. Here's an example of how it's used. Oh, you can turn up the light remote. Yeah. Let's take the plugins for it. Install the necessary plugins. Next, let's ask ChatGPT for a restaurant recommendation on Saturday, a recipe for Sunday, the total calorie count, and to order the ingredients on Instacart. First, it's using OpenTable to find me a great restaurant for Saturday. For Sunday, it's finding me a simple recipe, and it's asking Wolfram Alpha to calculate the calories. 862, great. Now let's make the shopping list. All right, all we have to do to order the ingredients is click the link. Yeah, and then it just puts all the ingredients right in there. Does it integrate with um, voice? Um, good question. Yes, it does. Meaning, can Alexa or you can dictate them to? Yes. So here are the plugins that are available right now. So your twelve-year-old um, can go order a Ferrari to be delivered. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't. I it could. Right. Uh, it could. Um, right here. So no, that's not it. But there is ways that you can integrate um, with Alexa or Siri or something like that. Um, there's actually, so this is how they're going to be making a lot of their money is Expedia is going to be paying a heavy, a heavy price to be able to have that plugin directly within their platform. So all of these big companies, um, they're kind of, they're making sure that they have an open AI, uh, chat GPT plugin ready for, for their brand. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, Elon Musk put out a letter. So you're familiar yeah. with Yeah, said so don't use it. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, Which I think don't, is funny. Well, yeah, he put out the letter stating that, you know, it's really scary what it can yeah. do and potential. And you know, we need to be careful. It's and China. All the big, uh, <laughs> yeah. All yeah. The big, you know, techie people signed the letter. And yes. They want the government to mm -hmm. move cautious. And so he said, Elon said he's going to come out with his own version Truth. called Truth GPT, yeah. which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, it's just funny it. that he was an mm -hmm. initial investor within this. Um, so just so you know, Google has its own version of this. Microsoft has one that's in beta right now that I we just heard a speaker who's actually testing that out right now. And he said that's his favorite of all of them is the Microsoft version. Um, so all of these big companies have this as well. We just, ChatGPT just caught on really quick. It had a lot of, I think, dollars funded behind it. And so we heard about it and this is the one that we're using. And I think that because we've become accustomed to this, I don't think people are gonna now go to the Google version or the Microsoft. I mean, they might use it, but I think people are gonna use this more than anything. Um, but a lot of companies are already doing this and they already have, or a lot of, big companies have this and they're already using this. Um, for example, have you guys ever heard or used our Chicago Life Farm tool that we have? Um, we actually have ChatGPT now integrated within that. So let's say you were to pull a farm within our with our Life Farm tool and you let's say you, you farm McCormick Ranch, right? And then within there you can say, take all of these homeowners and create a whatever, two two-page letter talking about me as a real estate agent or whatever that might be um, and you can set it up they have marketing campaigns in there so we are already getting this technology integrated within our um, into within our systems and so a lot of companies are already doing this 
The flip side of what you see right here is putting their companies into ChatGPT rather than the opposite of like what we did, right? We're, we don't have the funds to compete with Expedia right now, but um, this is what this looks like. So if I were to say, let's, let's actually do it. Let's just put it together. Um, let's say act as a uh, travel agent and give me a three day itinerary for Florence, Italy, um, we prefer to not walk very much. <laughs> okay. Do best resorts. Yeah, we can do that. So minimizing walking. It's giving me day one, day two, day three. This is what we're doing. Notice I did have web access turned on, so it is pulling some things from the internet. <laughs> this is really great. So what I'm um, curious, I'm doing the same thing. Is mine going to be the same as yours, so it probably be different? Did, uh, are you gonna? Did you put the exact same thing in? Pretty much. Minimize walking. I didn't do the walking part. See, that might change it a so little bit. Change it. Okay. Um, because I specifically it says you can take a break from walking. <laughs> um, so it does change it a little bit. Also, I have the web access enabled, so that may also make my answer a little bit different. It shouldn't really ever be the exact same. Um, let me show you a couple. Another couple things. So not only can it generate responses for us, I can also do the reverse. I I don't know whose this is. I just pulled it up because it just came out 25 minutes ago. Um, but here's a new listing. I can take this and I can say, rewrite this. All right. At. Oh, that's a good, that's at, a good one. As, yeah, because I mean, how many times can we say stunning views, exactly. gorgeous like, home, like, right? Like, like what else can we come up with? Act as a real estate agent and rewrite this property um, for a family with young kids. One time that I had somebody showing me how this works, I found that it you some descriptive language mm -hmm. repetitively sometimes. Yeah. So you had to kind of yeah. you know, edit. Sometimes it does, wow. absolutely. All right. That's fair so housing violation. Where we're at. <laughs> In the bottom. Especially for families and yes. young children. Boom. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. you have to be careful. Exactly that. So you don't want to just copy and paste, paste, right? You kinda of wanna read through it. So, and yeah. part of part of this presentation, which I'm not even gonna get back into the, the thing right here, but I say use your brand voice is we don't all want to sound the same, right? We want to put our own brand voice within this. And so we take this uh, property description right here and make it a little bit more you, but use maybe some of the descriptive words that are in here that your mind just didn't come up with. So right I wonder now. if you changed your commands mm -hmm. and included to comply mm -hmm. with yeah. fair housing, mm -hmm. it would eliminate that issue. Let's do it. Yeah, that's important. I'm going to turn this off. I Re prefer not to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rewrite this. Crazy um, does not suit me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have any yeah. questions or concerns, <laughs> <laughs> ask Fair Housing. It says, please contact the Fair Housing Commission. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. We welcome all potential buyers. Yeah. Right? So yes. Yes, it does. Clean it up. Um, right. So, okay. Now I want to show you guys, I have an example here of a, a, something that was spit out through here, and then I changed a little bit of it. So here is one example. And now I recommend you guys to go into copy leaks. So this is a tool where it can con it will detect how much is written by a robot, how much is written by a human. And so when you go to copy leaks, this is free, you do AI content detector. I'm going to paste it in here. And it will tell me how much is written, like I said, by human, how much is written by AI. So 88% is written by AI, which is pretty accurate. The bottom, the bottom sentence is what I did and I added in myself. 
um, the rest was written by AI. So this is just uh, maybe a, a guideline for you if you do want to put a little bit more of your voice, your branding within what it's giving you. This is a nice tool to be like, okay, 84% is still kind of a lot. Maybe I want to tweak a couple more things here and there. I mean, you get to choose, um, but there are there are uh, compliance. There are things that we have to be compliant <laughs> with as well. So keep that in mind. So Lindsay, is copy leaks where you can find out that your child? Like, yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these are the kind of tools. I mean, there's a ton of these. Um, this one I kind of thought was the most user friendly and easiest, but. There, this is the kind of stuff that schools are using right now to detect how much is being plagiarized, you know, at school, right? And they actually, this was, when I was in school, we had to, we had to submit our papers through something similar to this um, to make sure, like, we weren't cheating off a friend or something like that. But, um, yeah, this is, I would, this is just for your reference. I mean, it's not like you have to hit a certain number, but if you want to kind of sound a little bit more you, maybe put that in here. Um, we talked about, let's see, here was an example where it said, ask a real estate agent and give us, oh, where is it, right here, and recommend five strategies to generate more leads to expand your clientele, and I even spelled that wrong too. Um, you come in here, here are the five, five strategies, then I did it again, and I said, well, let's act as Tom Ferry. What would Tom Ferry say, right? And that's when I was saying, you can kind of say to act as a person um, and not necessarily just a profession. And then here we go. This is a little bit more at Tom Ferry's speed. Social media, video marketing, sounds about right. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? Oh, this was one where I said rewrite this. This one was, uh, this one I was actually surprised it responded to me. I was trying to say, tell me why Zillow sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it did actually give, it, I was surprised. I thought it was going to say, we cannot give opinions. Because um, I didn't have web access enabled here. And it did give me, it did give me something. So I was, I was surprised to see that. Let's see. Yeah, five tips on how a buyer can determine which neighborhood is best for them. Here are the tips. <coughs> it gave me three more. It gave me three more tips. Let's see what else we got in here. I mean, you can see all the different things you could come up with, whether it be personal, whether it be real estate related. Uh, I think this is a really great tool for you to be able to get some ideas if you're doing some social media content and you're like, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to post about, or I don't know what to say. Maybe, for example, maybe you do you do have an idea of, I want to talk about tips uh, for my buyers on which neighborhood to live in, but I don't know, I don't know how to write that into an Instagram caption <coughs> here at the bottom. Okay, now write the Instagram caption for the topic above. Here it is. And it even put some hashtags in there for me, right? So it's already done that part for me you can copy and paste it, but again, make sure it does sound like you. Um, maybe these hashtags aren't the hashtags you want to use in your post. Any questions on that bit? Any, well, any questions just, it on... It all sounds so incredible. I can't wait to start using yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so I would say that the things to really keep in mind with when you're using this is making sure you know how to word the prompt correctly so you're yielding the best response and you saw kind of the differences when I showed you this nutrition plan, how we went from something very basic to something a little bit more specific, you saw what kind of result we got from the differences. So make sure you understand how to write that plan correct or that prompt correctly. Um, but really, it's going to new chat. If you have the paid version, you get to decide. Let's show. I'm going to show you really quick what it looks like for the free version, the slower version, which. It's not even slow. Like the fact that they say it's slow, it's really not. Uh, That's probably slower if you're asking it to crunch a million numbers. Yes, correct. That's or like I said, creating code or something. No. Yes, absolutely. I'm a real estate agent. We don't care about it. it yes, create um, a video script. Well, even on the, I have a free version because I don't really care about yeah. speed. Yeah. Cards. 
And the few times that it said it's been busy, it's not busy for long. It's like I go do something and come back five, ten minutes later at work. So it's never like a day or long at all. So, and if it's something that's going to take time to generate, <coughs> it's generating. What it is. Yeah. 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 It's not funny. So this is the free version. So this is how fast the free version goes. Yeah. Pretty fast still, right? Yeah. Um, rather than 20 seconds, that's 25. Uh, but here, so it does even tell us play music at the beginning of the video. Then it gives you the script, real estate agent. Hello, welcome to this informative video. See, that's, that's where I would probably change up the scripts a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then it says, and it even tells you where to put in B-roll. Cut to a, sh a shot of a family walking through a home, right? <laughs> Cut to a shot of a home inspector checking the roof of a home. It tells you exactly what to put in here, which is kind of funny. But you get to choose what you're going to put in here. So that's the, that's the free version. Uh, all right, so I wanted to really quickly go through those the Chrome extensions. Now, I, sh I showed you guys web, web chat GPT. Now, there's even more. I'm going to go to related. There are so many that have been created for chat GPT already that do some cool stuff. So this one, chat GPT writer. So this one I think is a little bit scary in our industry. I don't know how much I would fully trust this is it will basically install the writer within your emails so if you use Gmail for example it will install that with that extension within your Gmail and it will auto write your email back for you see I just don't know if I would really want it within my emails since there's a lot of sensitive information within there uh, let's go to some more yeah they have one specific for Gmail summarizer so summarize is basically, if there's an article, you can see there's like a full on article right here. It does the quick cliff notes here on the right for you. They have that also for YouTube, which is really cool. YouTube summary. And so basically, if you're watching a YouTube video, rather than watching the full five minutes, it'll give me a little summary off to the side and it says, this is what it's, you know, ChatGPT is putting this all together and this is what it's talking about. Uh, there are so many of these little uh, what extensions. Are these are called Google Chrome extensions. So you have, like I said, you have to be using the Google Chrome browser, but at that point, uh, it will, it'll basically, what all of these do is it either summarizes a page or it writes a response for you. Those are basically what it does. If you enable it to be a writer, it will create the response for you, a tweeter, a tweeter. it will create the tweet for you, um, it's just putting those on those, it is putting ChatGPT on those web pages and it will write for you basically, rather than you coming in here, copying it, pasting it and putting it in there, it's just taking one step out of it and it lets you do it on the page itself. Um, the other half of these I think are more so summarizers, like I said, where it will skim an article, it'll give you the cliff notes. Uh, it'll. What all these things do. Um, let me see if there was. Oh, I, I put some of these extensions on there that I liked. Uh, what else? We talked about the new change that is coming. If you want to be in incognito mode, again, you go to the bottom, you go to your settings, data controls, and you would turn this off so it does not capture um, the training of what you like, the chat history. Oh. What other questions might you have? Lizzie, I have one. When yeah. you did the nutrition plan, yeah. you didn't tell it that you were female, what you were eating. No, I didn't. That, that would be that would be some more specifics that you would want to give it. Yeah, for you to get an even more dialed in plan, that would be great. So I could say, you know, I'm X percent body fat and I want to be this, right? right. So it kind so of already you know knows really where I'm at. Yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't pick up that it's coming from a female, right? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Well, does this? You have your own account. Because mm -hmm. you have the paid version. Yep. So conceivably, the AI algorithm oh, should sure. be able to learn from you. Yeah, it should. So the first time that you've put
put in an email or something and you mentioned that you were a female yes. it stores it it should yes if i have if i keep that chat history turned on then yes it should know mm -hmm. i don't know why they would ever really remove the history yeah, it's, I, I they mean, say I think the button's there to appease people. us, but I really don't think they're not going to it. No, no. The, the government has a vested interest in right. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it, like I said, this started, I read um, in Europe, there was this whole thing that actually Italy, I think, that, that was, went against their Privacy Act. And so that's why, that's why that button was created. But it did say, and you can actually see it, I think, on here, it does say, it says, Unsaved chats will be, will be deleted from our systems within 30 days. Let's see, learn more. Will it really? <laughs> I don't know. Once it's to monitor for abuse, we will retain all conversations for 30 days before permanently deleting. How do you abuse chat? I, don't, I mean, I wonder if it's like, you know how some people on Facebook say things that like incriminate them? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I my head doesn't go there. How to, <laughs> how to rob a bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. I'm like, I don't want to say anything. I <laughs> think that I'm doing something. Um, what are the, any other questions? Yeah. One question. So you're getting all these updates like you just knew that Incognito came in. Is it because you're paid that you're getting no, notified? No, it's, it's, it's because <coughs> of my job. <laughs> so so I personally, um, with, with my role, I subscribe to a ton of different blogs that give me the updates every time algorithm changes on Instagram or something new happens here. Like I read about that stuff every morning just to see what's new. So that way when I'm presenting, I have like accurate information to give you. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm sure there are some sources that you could subscribe to that would give you uh, chat shanty updates whenever they occur. Right. Yeah. I was just wondering if they are emailing and saying, no. You know, like you'll get random updates. Yeah, them. no, I didn't yeah. get anything okay. from them. Yeah. Are there statistics mm -hmm. on how successful advertising is through Facebook and all the different? Yes, uh, I would say from what we've experienced, so Jill and I, when we've been able to sit down with agents and help people with it, I find with advertising through a social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever that be, it's very similar to you doing like a postcard mailer, right? Like if you do one postcard mailer, no one's gonna call you, right? If you do one Facebook ad, no one's gonna no one's gonna follow up with you on that. It has to be over a long period of time. And with Facebook specifically, uh, Facebook, Instagram, they since they changed who we can target in 2019 maybe 18, when they changed that, uh, that changed the game for real estate where we can't target age, gender, household income, like there's so many things we can't do. And so I find the best way around that is to do lists. If you upload a custom list uh, to Facebook and you're specifically targeting those people because you have received their email addresses and you're certifying, yes, I, you know, have access to these email addresses, I can now serve them an ad. That's actually the, that is what I have seen has had the best turnaround for social media advertising is like I said, uploading a custom list where you're like, these are the people that I want to see my ad um, because it's just, it's more specific. It's more targeted rather than you just saying, all right, 85255 and you have to do a 15 mile zip code or 15 mile radius around a zip code. So that's massive in, in Arizona. 15 miles is huge. Um, but so like if you're so if you're running um, any sort of Facebook ads, you have a, a database, you have your client, your sphere. You should always be running something to that list. So yeah, um, that's they don't know that that they're on a list and their your ad is only being served to them. But um, your sphere should be seeing you everywhere, and that's what the custom audience ads do. So I don't, I guess I don't have a specific number for you right now, but I can tell you, like I said, in our experience, it's the people who do it on a regular basis, uh, of course, and then um, who are using the custom audience list feature, because that is just so much more specific with targeting versus let's do that radius and because you can't do any demographic targeting. So it's really just casting in it and hoping somebody's interested. Um, so that's why I say the specific list and we... Um, we have access to 
those lists. If you wanted a consumer list of people in McDowell <coughs> Mountain Ranch with positive equity who have been in their home for five years and whatever other parameters you want to put around that. Yeah, so we can pull those lists and then we just run it through software to find um, the phone consumer matches. information. So. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anything else on chat GBT or did you guys learn a lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so dangerous. Yeah, I, all of those, yeah. those of you who haven't used it, are so you going to want to use it now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really good for writing the emails that you don't want to write that aren't very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be nice to, like, if you have to turn down some offers, right? It can make it into a nice little email back to them. Break up with a girlfriend. Break them. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 I, I do not watch, I'm not a South Park girl. My, br my younger brother, he told me about this episode on South Park. If you guys get a chance to see this on like YouTube or anything, it is hilarious. So the kids, I guess they're kids on South Park, they use ChatGPT to talk to their girlfriend. And so the, the whole storyline is they're like, I don't know how to like connect with a girl, right? And so the whole thing is them, just their phones are doing the whole typing and they're playing basketball, playing video games, whatever, and the phone's doing the conversation. <laughs> and then the common person and the girl, they're like sitting at a dinner table, and she's like, so what did you think about that, that thing? And he's like, <laughs> what? And it is the funniest thing. And so they actually, with that particular episode, the last five minutes, was actually written by ChatGPT. The writers had ChatGPT write the script for that particular episode. It's hilarious. Again, I don't watch that show, but it was. Is funny. there a plugin for that? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure there is. Right. 